What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today we're gonna be checking out a brand new 60% mechanical keyboard that enters the gaming market. This is the HyperX Alloy Origins 60. This just released today, and while these keyboards are exploding on the scene, we now have a new competitor in the market following things like the Huntsman Mini from Razer, uh, Cooler Master has their own 60. So we'll check it all out for you guys today, go over the pros and cons, do a sound test, all that stuff in case you're interested in picking it up. So first up, like I said in the intro, the 60% keyboard scene is definitely becoming more popular. In last year in 2020, when they released the Alloy Origins Core TKL keyboard, I dubbed that my favorite of all of 2020. They did a great job with that. So when I heard they were releasing a smaller 60% version, I was definitely interested to see if that could hold up or follow suit with design and construction. And I can tell you right off the bat, it definitely does. Because when I first got it unboxed and I picked it up, it has some weight to it. It's definitely hefty. And the material here is all that aluminum. Hence the alloy name, because it's an aluminum alloy construction. The bezels all around are nice and minimal. It has the rounded edges to it. So I think it looks really nice. They get a thumbs up in that regard for the build quality and the visual aesthetics. Taking a closer look at the PBT keycaps, they have a real slight texture to them. So it's gonna feel nice on your fingertips, but also it's not gonna show that gloss or that shine from oils or the fingerprints and stuff. So it'll do a good job at avoiding that. And one of the big things I always see, uh, oddly enough, with 60% keyboards is people like really complaining that the reason they don't want a 60% keyboard is because they don't have all the functions at their fingertips. But you literally do because the function key exists, believe it or not. So using that function key, you still have access to like the arrow keys. F1 through 12 is up top. You can adjust your brightness, the profiles, you have media keys. It's all side printed on the keycaps here that give you those functions. So trust me, you're not losing out. And I get there's no pleasing anybody. I've joked about this before on Twitter. When I show off a 60% board like this, the vocal majority complains that there's no numpad. Then when I show off a full size keyboard, people are complaining that no one uses a numpad. But I guess circling back, my point was the function key on here still gives you access to those extra functions. Inside the box, they do give you two extra goodies that I have on the board right now, including the HyperX logo on the escape key and a familiar looking spacebar. Hmm, topo accents on a keyboard. Where have I seen that before? Hmm, couldn't be me. Hmm, no, not me. Hmm, topo accessories for gaming? Not ringing a bell. Hmm, I don't know. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying I invented this in the gaming space by any means, but I certainly didn't see it in gaming peripherals before 2019 when we launched the mouse pad. Then last year, the keyboard. Now HyperX with their own space bar. And I will say it's done very nicely. I like how it's shine through. That's definitely a cool little plus. And also it's a bit textured. So the grooves in that topo design, uh, you can feel those sort of individually. It's not like aggressive. It's a very subtle texture to it, uh, but I do like it. I'm not gonna lie. I thought at first when I got this in that it was like a little um, additional accent piece just for me. Uh, but then I saw it was in their branding materials. And I was like, oh, this is an actual part of the keyboard that everyone's gonna get. Okay, cool. Again, stuff like this, the little novelty accented keycaps that companies are including, I am all for, 100%. It's just funny that it happens to be Topo. Also, real quick, the coil cable I'm using here is not included. This is my own. Uh, but they do have the USB-C cable included inside the box. It's just a stock cable. And do note, it seems they took some feedback from the Alloy Origins Core TKL because the USB-C port is now properly on the left side. So it gives the coil cable users, like myself, some more room to have it nicely on display. Then lastly, before we move on, flipping it over, you do have two flip out feet, plus the four rubber pads in each corner to avoid it sliding around your desktop. Now, as for the switches, in this unit here, I have their own HyperX Red Switch, which is linear. Has the 80 million keystroke lifespan, actuates at 45 grams, down at 1.8 millimeters, and has a total travel distance of 3.8 millimeters. So while this is one of their three total offerings, they have their tactile aqua switches and their clicky blue switches, this is currently the only switch available, but I assume they're gonna be having all three available to pick from. And while the design to the 60 here has the floating switches, you can sort of see the red accents on the switches underneath. It's very, very minor though, and really shouldn't be a problem. Death, taxes, and me doing a sound test to moisten your pants.
Sound overall for the aluminum frame was pretty decent. Uh, there really wasn't a lot of audible rattle or pinging from the stabilizers, which is good. A space bar, maybe a little bit more. But in terms of actual feel for the stabilizers, I didn't notice too much actual rattling and stuff when I was using them. They stayed in place. So in terms of my actual use case, gaming, testing, all that stuff, put it through the usual paces, which is just hating everything about Battlefield 5, even though I continue to play it. Durability wise, I tried to flex it a bit, didn't really budge, so all good there. But yes, gaming with these red switches, it felt fine, it felt right as I expected. I do want to point out, we'll take a closer look at it in a second, uh, but you do have to download their HyperX Ingenuity software if you want to go and do things like change up more of the effects, because they just have the three onboard profiles to the keyboard itself. And there's a Microsoft Store exclusive, which is uh, pretty annoying. But I mean, there's nothing for me to really complain about for the keyboard itself when gaming. It's got the full N key rollover, you know, 100% anti-ghosting. I didn't experience any issues with chattering. Obviously, that would be a pretty big deal that I would have brought up by now. No quality control issues. It all just felt really good. I'm very used to using linear switches, you guys know by now. Uh, so there was no adjustment on that front. They still felt very smooth. That 1.8 actuation point does give you the slightest bit of advantage that no one's ever going to really notice. But hey, those 0.2 millimeters might make a difference. Just keep telling yourself that. The ruler only lies sometimes. But no, all in all for the keyboard, again, no complaints on my end. Felt great. Performance-wise, it does what you want a keyboard to do. And yes, while there's optical switches out there, you have certain speed switches, they're technically faster and more reliable once you factor in all the technology and stuff behind it. But honestly, things like your internet speed, ping, input lag, refresh rate are all much more important. So what I'm saying is this keyboard isn't going to hold you back at all. All right, so now for the Ingenuity software, which is my biggest issue with pretty much HyperX as a whole. You can see it's really not too complex, so I like the fact that it is relatively user-friendly and simple, but that can be to a fault because it's too simple in terms of what they offer. So under the Lights tab, this is where you can change up all the RGB, and it's right there on the bottom. You only have 10 total effects with seven being the looped effects, which is just pretty much their standard RGB effect offering. Or you can go up top where there is the choose triggered effect, which give you three more triggered lighting effects, which for example, when you press that on a key, it'll then do a separate animation. So you only have 10 RGB effects total, which I think is very, very limiting, right? I mean, that's, that's not a lot. <laughs> it's 2021, RGB has been a pretty big thing since 2014 at this point. So only 10 is kind of strange. You technically can do things like stack layers on top of each other to create more effects, but you're still limited to just those 10 ones they have for you. Now the next keys tab is where you can go in and you know create macros, change up what each key does individually, both for that base layer as well as the function layer, which I talked about before. That's where you can go in and you know assign the different profiles, RGB, your media keys, the arrow keys. You can create more functions than just the ones that are side printed on the keycap, so you're not limited in any way. But then over on the right side of the software, you'll see their presets tab. And this is just pretty much the three profiles that they have on the board at all times. So you can create more than just three presets or more than three profiles, but only three actually save onto the keyboard. So regardless of what you're creating, uh, you really only have those three to pick from at all times. So if you make some different RGB effects and you have different macros and reprogram layers and you save them to a new preset, well, you can only assign three to the keyboard. So at the end of the day, I'll say this about the Origins Core 60. For $100, that's a pretty competitive value taking a look at the 60% landscape out there, considering especially this is that aluminum alloy frame that's nice and solid, plus you get PBT keycaps, which is an advantage over most of the 60% keyboards out there right now. But I do have to say, please, Give us more than three onboard profiles. Improve the software a bit. I know while I'm still annoyed that it's a Microsoft Store exclusive, that's probably not going to change. But give us more than just three onboard profiles that only gives us three RGB lighting effects to change on the keyboard itself. That's very limiting. That's very, like, 2012. We should have more than three onboard profiles at this point. Um, also, while you're at it in the software, give us more than the very standard RGB lighting effects. Those are very limiting and nothing, you know, too extravagant, we'll say. And then lastly, while I hinted before that they're going to be um, probably offering more switches available in the future, um, I would probably wait until this comes out in the Aqua Tactile switches because those are one of my favorite switches of all time. I don't know what they're doing, 
but they're, you know, like, like a brown equivalent, the cherry brown switches with them being tactile, but they're just way more smooth. So they're a smooth tactile switch. I love them. Uh, so I would probably wait until those are available uh, to pick up the Origin 60, because right now, uh, while the keyboard itself is great, I don't have any qualms with the keyboard itself, uh, I would just rather it have those Aqua switches to be fully worth it in the end. So, like I said, my main gripe is with the software being limiting, uh, keyboard itself not doing anything too special. It's made well, but the, the Aqua switches would make it a better purchase, I say. So, that'll wrap it up for my review of the HyperX Alloy Origin 60. Hope you all enjoyed. If you did, give it a big thumbs up, show your support, and also drop the link for you in the description down below. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, at RandomFrankP, and lastly, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you all enjoyed. Have a good day.